and welcome warriors hope you guys are having a lovely day as always you have my appreciation as well as respect and holy hallelujah has the sign build seen some massive increases to its overall efficiency and productivity that is to say that it's much more powerful than it once was however keep in mind before you ever set out to make a sign build know that not every single enemy is vulnerable to every type of sign meaning if you rely on one specific source of damage then you may find yourself needing to reroll at specific instances throughout the story simply to be able to affect an enemy at all whatsoever for example, if you were to make this an Igni build, which is what we have done here, golems, gargoyles, some of the wild hunt, some of bosses, will not be affected by fire at all whatsoever. So you're going to have to re-roll. What that means is that at any point in time, you're going to need at least 12,000 or more gold to rebuy whatever greater glyphs you have used or you plan to replace. So keep that in mind. It is somewhat labor intensive and... Although it is slightly more powerful than it used to be, still not as powerful as the Euphoria build in its heyday. However, I will say that now it is probably the superior build. This one, kill the shit like ah! 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 You want the entire Grandmaster or Grandmaster Legendary Griffin set. You want the Rejuvenation Enchantment on one of your swords, because any time we kill an enemy, we'll get all of our stamina back. The other three slots should be dedicated to Greater Velus Runestones, so we have a 15% increase to Sign Intensity. We want Ignition, not Eruption, not the other ability. We want Ignition on the armor, and we want the other six slots dedicated to whatever particular sign we are focusing on. An all-around ubiquitous sign would be Quen if you never want to have to change because you're always going to want to be using a shield. However, Igni is probably going to be the most profitable in terms of damage. Now, what's beautiful about this, make sure, always make sure to validate or legitimize the source of information before you come at me in the comment section, because I've seen people try and pass off their information as upscale death march, and they never verify or validate the legitimacy of their information. For all I know, they're probably playing on normal, and guess what? They actually are, because I can tell simply by looking how many times I've played through this, how much damage they're doing, how much damage the enemy is receiving receiving, so on and so forth. Always make sure to legitimize. Make sure the information you're getting is 100% accurate. As you can see, unedited footage. Now we're going to go ahead and piss off one of these town guards. Simply put, town guards have the highest scaling in the game, so it should follow that on upscale death march, these will be the most resilient and or most damaging. They will see the most increase to their base stats. And as you've just seen, absolutely a non-issue at all whatsoever we can kill all of the town guards to our heart's content anywhere and everywhere no longer an issue and the beauty of this build is it only grows stronger if you use of course superior tawny owl or superior petri's filter if one of them wants to get stupid with us go ahead and do this lure him into the other guy he gets caught on fire from collateral damage as the fire burns on the ground it will indeed set other enemies on fire and because of the increases from the griffin set Erden is also going to interrupt his shield as well as deal damage you want the secondary ability on Erden in order to take advantage of the uh 
fact that it will increase all of our sign intensity as well as reduce incoming damage and simply put keep enemies from attacking us not only this we can essentially indefinitely spam all of our various signs as well as sign abilities simply because some of the other things that, that we're using that we'll get into momentarily So hopefully this is enough to show you the efficacy or how absolutely busted this particular build is. As you can see, there's nothing that they can really do to ever even pose any amount of challenge. They're always going to sit here and just simply get wrecked, as it were. If they try and get close to us or close to the other enemies, they're immediately going to be set on fire. And once again, if you're finding it a little bit difficult, the secondary ability of Erden is absolutely great for controlling the battlefield. So let's go ahead and get into all of the juicy little details. We want the entire Grandmaster or Grandmaster Legendary Griffin set with the rejuvenation enchantment on the sword, meaning anytime we kill an enemy, we get 100% of our stamina back. The other three slots should be dedicated to greater Velus runestones for a 15% increase to sign intensity. We want ignition, not eruption, not the other ability, ignition on the uh, you know armor set simply because we want that 100% chance to ignite other enemies within a two yard radius, which is essentially six feet. If they move close to the other enemy, they're getting caught on fire regardless. All other six slots should be dedicated to greater glyphs of Igni, if of course you are using this as an Igni build. You could also go down the Axi Road or Erden, and if that is the case, you're going to need a different, a separate enchantment on the body rather than Ignition. However, in my opinion, Igni is the far superior option, as most enemies have a fire vulnerability, with very few exceptions. Those being some bosses, some of the wild hunt enemies, as well as golems or gargoyles things made out of stone for example they're obviously not going to be able to get set on fire now as far as abilities are concerned the early abilities that you're going to want to focus on are melt armor as well as igni intensity and pyromaniac everything else only serves the purpose of further multiplying our sign intensity as such you should forego leveling those and instead favor investing heavily into the green until you have the synergy ability active so that we can get that 60% increase to our sign intensity from greater mutagens. Unfortunately for us, if we are using the magic sensibilities ability, which will allow our critical hits to deal or allow magic to deal critical hits and increase their damage, then unfortunately we cannot put our green or our golden abilities in the center. So we're going to miss out on an additional 30% damage, but it's an absolute necessity to both use synergy as well as Griffin school techniques. Once again, everything else here is simply there to multiply sign intensity. However, I find since we get a massive benefit from all of the various Erden abilities from the Grandmaster or Grandmaster Legendary Griffin set, probably not a bad idea to go with Erden. As far as I have tested it, I have seen that the Ard abilities are not that good, especially even if you're using Piercing Cold. Most of the time, only human enemies will be affected. And just simply put, not that good. We could go ahead and just swap here immediately. Let's go ahead and see what's this Ard. Yeah, we don't have to worry about Ard intensity. Let's go ahead and go try and use Ard on some of these enemies. You can't stab town guards when they fall to the ground, so that immediately makes it less effective, whereas Igni can actually kill them. Let's go ahead and see if we can't uh, make use of some Ard. As you can see, it's not dealing the massive amount of damage that it said it was dealing. We can spam it indefinitely, and we can damage them. But in my opinion, 
far slower, far less effective than if, of course, we were simply to just catch them on fire and use all of the various effects from Erden. Now I'm getting shot in the back by some respawning guards, but not really an issue. Let's go ahead and cast Quen before we get killed here. Dude, they're catching me in some kind of arrow loop. Not gonna happen, buddy. So even if we're in a little bit of a spot of bother, not really going to be that much of an issue as you can see. It's just gonna respawn these guys because it wants to kill me. It's never a good idea to be fighting town guards in the first place. But as you can see, even though they almost got me, close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. So anyways, that is the build right there. It absolutely destroys pretty much everything in the game. Once again, with the exception of any of the monsters that are invulnerable to fire that just won't receive damage to fire or the bosses that receive damage from fire. But for example, things such as shorts, beans, or any of the various wyverns, etc., things that are in fact weak to fire, will be absolutely liquefied and melted in seconds. And overall, it's just a great build for controlling the battlefield. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Let me know if there's another build you guys want to see or something you want explained in greater depth. So that's all there is to it. Let me know how you feel about it and I'll see you the next time I post a video. Hope you guys have an absolutely lovely, lovely day. Let me know. And I'll talk to you next time. Peace out.